momentum. Momentum is everywhere. Heavier, fast-moving objects have more momentum. Momentum before equals momentum after. Great in the science guy. This episode is brought to you by Airbags, saving people's lives from momentum since 1971. Momentum is a quantity of motion of a moving body, measured as a product of mass and velocity. Wow, that's so cool! Try this at home! We can see momentum in real life by using a ruler, a quarter, and a nickel. First, let's place the nickel really close to the ruler and place the quarter at a distance and slide it. This is how the momentum is transferred from the quarter to the nickel. Now, let's reverse it. Let's place the quarter really close to the ruler and, the, and slide the nickel from a distance. Notice how the quarter did move very far from the ruler, but the dime did. That's because the mass of the quarter is greater than the mass of the nickel. Go. Is there a way to calculate momentum? Yes, there's one simple formula. P equals mv, where P stands for momentum, m stands for mass, and v stands for velocity. Don't forget, Momentum is measured in kilograms times meters per second. If me and my bike have a combined mass of 77 kilograms and I start pedaling at 1.5 meters per second, then you can calculate my momentum. <laughs> By plugging in the numbers I mentioned earlier into the momentum formula, we can solve for my total momentum while I was riding at a velocity of 1.5 meters per second. Upon solving it, we can see that I had a momentum of 116 kilograms times meters per second. So what else can I do with the formula? Well, you can rearrange the formula to solve for either mass or velocity. Awesome! I love physics! Conservation of momentum. Newton's third law suggests that when one body exerts a force on a second body, the second body exerts an equal and opposite force on the first body. Like Newton's third law, the conservation of momentum states that the momentum of objects in a closed isolated system does not change. Holy conservation, Brayden! How am I going to remember that? Well, we can remember by saying that the total momentum after equals the total momentum before. Try this at home. So say I roll a golf ball with a mass of 0.045 kilograms and imagine it travels at approximately 0.5 meters per second towards another golf ball with the same mass. The momentum from the first golf ball will transfer to the second golf ball and to the third golf ball, which will then move. The conservation of momentum states that the momentum before equals the momentum after, meaning the mass of the first object multiplied by the velocity of the first object is equal to the mass of the second object multiplied by the velocity of the second object. Well, let's take a look. Impulse is defined as the force exerted on a body at a specific time interval. If I hit this golf ball with a force of 550 newtons, where the golf ball and the golf club come into contact for one five thousandth of a second, we can then calculate the impulse. Impulse equals F delta T where F equals the force applied and delta T equals the amount of time it took to apply the force. By plugging the numbers previously stated into the impulse formula, we can solve for the impulse on the golf ball, which happens to be 3 newton seconds. Hello? Hello? Brayden, the 
the science guy, I have a question. What's a collision? Well, yes. There are two types of collisions. First, an elastic collision. This means that when two objects collide, they will go off separately and the kinetic energy will remain the same. The second one is an inelastic collision. When two objects collide, they will stick together and the kinetic energy is not conserved. Thank you, that makes so much sense. Try this at home. Look, I'm about to win this game. I have two pool balls. Both of them are stationary, but I'll be hitting this one at approximately 0.3 meters per second. Once this one moves, it will collide with the eight ball. The eight ball will then go into the pocket, making me win the game. Good thing I know the concept of collisions to make this shot perfect. Knowing that the total momentum after is equal to the total momentum before, we can then use the elastic collisions formula to solve for the velocity of the eight ball. This formula is mva1 plus mvb1 is equal to mva2 plus mvb2, where b2 is the momentum of the eight ball after the collision, and a1 is the momentum of the cue ball before the collision. Once plugging in all the information we know, and then ignoring all the friction that is on the pool table, we can then rearrange the formula and solve for v on the eight ball. The outcome would be 0 0.3 meters per second. This is because no momentum is lost during an elastic collision. Try this at home. Here, we have a green Lamborghini with a mass of 0 0.3 kilograms. And here, we have a blue Mustang with a mass of 0 0.566 kilograms. In this inelastic collision, the green Lamborghini will remain stationary, while the blue Mustang will approach it with a velocity of 0 0.6 meters per second. Now, let's see what happens. When solving an inelastic collision, we use the formula MVA1 plus MVB1 is equal to MA plus MB multiplied by V2. When A1 is equivalent to the Mustang, B1 represents a Lamborghini, and V2 is equal to the velocity of both cars after the collision. Once plugging in all the information we know into the inelastic equation, we can then solve for the velocity of both the cars combined, which is also known as V2. This turns out to equal 0 0.392 meters per second. Thank you for teaching me about momentum, Brayden the Science Guy. You're welcome, Shy.